So Assassin's Creed Syndicate is coming closer and closer to the 10 year anniversary for the game and since we're all waiting for Assassin's Creed Red I thought it might be fun to talk about this game now after eight and a half years from release. How does it hold up? Is it still fun? Does it hold up to the new games? Is it even worth your time? Let's talk all about it. It's one of, if not the most controversial Assassin's Creed game that we ever got because it basically led to the downfall of the original style of Assassin's Creed and the rise of the RPG series. The sales for this game were so low that Ubisoft took a minute, stood back and made Assassin's Creed Origins after it. So it is responsible for a lot of hate but also a lot of love. In my honest opinion, it's not as bad as you probably think it is. It came out not so long after Unity and it didn't change so much for the worse, honestly. And I wanna start with the gameplay first of all because that's what Unity is known about after all. How does it hold up? compared to Unity since it released basically in the same time period. I'm gonna be honest, I think it's more fun than Unity. I really didn't enjoy the jankiness in Unity both in parkour and in combat and Syndicate solved it in the parkour department but not so much in the combat but at least it's not intrusive. In Syndicate it became a brawler game basically. You just have to smash the square button and block with the circle and that's what it is. You build up your combo and fight people. It's like a worse version than the Arkham games combat style. It's not that good, it's not amazing, it's not even fun sometimes, but compared to Unity, I think it's better, because Unity just felt like a chore. It was either too hard or too janky or too tricky, and I just didn't like it. I know that it's meant to incentivize stealth and whatnot, but even if you are incentivizing stealth, eventually you're gonna come into a combat area and Unity didn't handle that too well. In Syndicate it handles it better. It doesn't handle it as good as let's say Origins or Odyssey or Valhalla or like the Ezio trilogy, but it handles it okay. It's still hard enough to incentivize you to be more stealthy and assassinate people, but it lets you get a little creative when it comes to combat and fighting enemies with your hands or sword. Which leads me to one of my main problems with the game and that's the combat weapons. Unlike in Unity, there's also only three types of weapons in this game. The knuckles, the dagger, and the cane sword, which are unique. I do like the idea of them. They fit the setting, they fit the style of the game, but I wish there were more types to choose from, you know? It's not that deep, it's fun to use. The animations work well, it's a little sped up, it feels sometimes unnatural, but it is fun to engage with combat, and I think that's a good point with the game. Of course, I don't like it more than Odyssey, for example, and I like Ezio's combat more, but if I had to choose between it and Unity, I would choose Syndicate every day. But combat isn't the reason that I like this game. The reason I do like it is because of the stealth. I mean, it's Assassin's Creed, after all. Stealth is the main focus. And stealth is really well done in this game, in my opinion. It's more straightforward. Forward, it's easier to understand and comprehend. You can tag enemies through your eagle vision, which you can't do in, for example, Mirage. And it's not as easy as the newer RPG games. It's like a perfect middle ground. You can tag enemies using your eagle vision, but up to a certain distance. It's easy to navigate, but also not too easy. You have to use parkour. The grappling hook might sound like it breaks the stealth, but it doesn't because you are very easily detected when you use it. There's a lot of tools at your disposal that are fun to use as well. Although one of my main problems with it is the lack of unique tools to use. We got used to having a lot of different tools like the rope launcher, the crossbow from uh, Ezio, the newer games Mirage has the noisemaker, the throwing knives, stuff like this. There's a very limited amount of those in this game. You only have a gun, a throwing knife, a berserk dart, and a smoke bomb, and that's it basically. And like a normal hand grenade. There's not too many and I wish there were more so we could have more unique interactions but what is there works well and is enjoyable to use. The aim assist with the knife is a little wonky but it's still okay to use and I have fun using it. And other than that the stealth is just really well made in my opinion. And because combat is like a last resort in case stealth fails, 90% of the game you're gonna go through it using stealth. And since stealth is stronger than it was in Unity or Black Flag, I do enjoy the stealth in this game the most and the gameplay loop is just really really smooth and good feeling. And there are so many different opportunities to use this gameplay loop because you are freeing up London. Just like in all the Assassin's Creed games where you free up a city, this time it's London and it's broken down into boroughs and each borough has a couple of activities that you can do. 
For example, there's a Templar hunt where you need to go to a location and assassinate a specific Templar. There's like gang freeing locations where you need to just basically care everyone. There's locations where you need to free up working children. There's a lot of different things that you can do. There's a certain amount of side activities in each burrow and they are fun and not the annoying kind. I'm glad that there is no tiling mission or anything like that. So you, what the stuff you do is enjoyable because you're going to be doing it a lot. And I feel like the gameplay really shines in that because it lets you get creative with it. These missions don't take too long. If you need to assassinate a Templar in a specific burrow, it's not going to take you like 15 minutes to do it. You can make it 15 minutes if you take your time, scout out the area, assassinate everyone, or you could just go in, shoot him with a gun and run away. You can do both. And it's fun that you have this control over the gameplay. And as a quick tangent, I really like the map in this game because it just feels good to open it up. When you start the game, it's going to look all dark and red because it's none of it is under your control. And as you go through the game and free up more and more burrows, it's gonna get its color back and the red is gonna be gone and it just feels satisfying to unlock. If we are already playing a Ubisoft games where I need to tick off a thousand boxes, I'd rather it looks good while I'm ticking it off. It's not important, it's like a nitpick thing, but I really do enjoy the map in this game. Which is also one of my big problems with Unity, that the map was just too confusing and I didn't feel like anything I did actually affected it. But the gameplay doesn't really matter if the character you're playing as is annoying the whole time and let's Let's talk a minute about the Fright Twins. For all the shit that I heard about them, they're really not that bad. I do enjoy playing as them. Evie is really okay, I really like her. And Jacob, even though he can be cringy sometimes, he's not so bad. I really do enjoy, like, having missions with him. He's more of a chill dude. And it really isn't as bad as people make it seem like it is. Maybe, you know, back in the day when it came out, it was. But now, while well, we have characters like Far Cry 6 characters, this is just amazing writing compared to what we have nowadays. So, yeah, I really didn't mind the Fright Wins. I think they're fine assassins, good protagonists. Although I wish that Eevee was the only character that you play as. It's fun to switch between the two, but I feel like they just didn't want to commit to one character, one female character. And it would have been fun to just have Eevee as the main character because she is more interesting than Jacob and she has a more fleshed out personality. And I do like my missions more with her. Either way, it's well done. And I feel like this was the prelude to what they tried to do with Odyssey. Because this is the same studio that made Odyssey. And I feel like this was the first time that they tried to have a dual protagonist thing. And it was their learning era. So I don't mind it. I do like the characters. And they are really not as bad as you might think from what you hear online. One character that I didn't like though is the main villain, Crawford Sterry. He does seem intimidating at first, and even by the end of the game he seems intimidating, but he really doesn't do much. You fight his goons all the game, and like you don't even talk with him, maybe like once or twice, but he really doesn't do anything. And I miss the days of like Cesare and those guys, back when Ezio was the main protagonist. Villains who do stuff, villains you see affect the world and are intimidating intimidating and they straight up threaten you. This guy was fine as an antagonist but I really didn't feel scared of him. He just was like the normal Templar big guy who I need to hunt down who is not gonna affect me in any way. So that's a weak point from the story department but I think it doesn't ruin the game as a whole. It's still fun to explore and go through this game because the setting of London is amazing. Which is one of the stuff that I love about this game, London itself and the setting of London. One of my big problems with Odyssey is that I don't find the French Revolution that interesting, at least the way it was depicted in the game, especially with those accents. But in this game, the London that they built for this one is really mind-blowing and amazing and still holds up today. It looks good even today, especially after playing Mirage. It still looks great, feels great. Yeah, the streets could be wide, but you have the grappling hook, so it's kind of a plus minus thing. It balances out and it is interesting to see and explore and learn about interesting people and characters and meet these historical figures who you do get to meet a lot of them through this game. And I feel like London is just a blast to explore. It might not be the most amazing, realistic London, but it is more realistic than Valhalla, that's for sure. And there's a ton of little design decisions that I love about this game. For example, the way you have to cross the river in the middle of the city of London. It is a big river and if they didn't think of this thing it would be really boring to cross. For example, Unity. They basically built out a Frogger game inside Assassin's Creed. 
Just like the good old Frogger game where you have to cross the street while jumping between cars and shit. This game does that with the river and it's just a genius idea. It solves the problem of the river being too wide and it makes it engaging to parkour through it and go through the city in a more engaging way. And I just love everything about it. There's a lot of little things like this that I don't want to spoil, but are fun to go through. Like the black box assassination missions, like this Frogger game. There's a lot of attention to detail and love put into this game. All in all, I think Syndicate in 2024 is worth a shot, especially if you're a fan of the series. But don't expect this game to be like the Ezio trilogy or like Black Flag or like Mirage. This game is more of a middle ground between the Assassin's Creed games and since we're all waiting for Assassin's Creed Red and we've most likely played all the other games, I know that a lot of people skipped out on Syndicate because they got the bad reviews, just like myself. I didn't play this game because I heard a lot of bad stuff about it. But I think if you're a fan like me, you should give it a shot because this game is really fun. And honestly, I like it more than Unity. And I do enjoy it a lot. My only thing that I have left to play with it is the Jack the Ripper DLC, which I heard a lot of good things about it. So I'm gonna check that out too. Hopefully that's even more fun for the game. But the main game itself is fun and good to stand on its own and if you want to play it let me know what you think about it because I really did enjoy my time with it. But that's all for today, if you're interested in more Assassin's Creed videos there's on your screen right now, that's what my channel is about, check it out, let me know, do the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, share, whatever it is and thank you for watching and as always have a nice day.